are here with the 2020 Christmas beer review. Dave picked them out this year. Yeah. We got six. Yeah, we got six, but we're also not just doing beer. Okay. We're going to be eating deer. So, hence the rhyme, Christmas beers and white-tail deer. Christmas beers and white-tail deer. So, we're going to be trying beers, and at the same time, we're going to be trying some lesser-known parts of the deer that people eat. Okay, look forward to that. What are we doing first, beer or deer? We're going to order me. Okay. That sounds good? Sounds good. All right. So, you get to pick one. We got three cans, three bottles. That bottle on the corner. You want a bottle. So, right off the bat, we got Evil Genius. Called Santa, I know him. What is the description on this bad boy? Uh, it's just a, it's a farmhouse L. It's a saison, seven point two percent. Oh wow! Nice one to start with. I like the color. Yes, nice amber, golden. It's got that definitely farmhousey smell though. Mm. Oh, yeasty. Like wheat and wild yeasty. Yes. So. Barley wine. Let's waste no more time and we'll delve right in. 2020 Christmas. We made it. I mean, that's pretty tasty. Yeah. It's um it's, it's not too like rye or wild yeast or barley wine-ish. Um no. It's got that weedy flavor, but it's not overbearing. Sweet. Sweet. Smooth. Doesn't taste like 7-2 though. Does not taste like a 7-2 mm -hmm. at all. Mm. Was it Christmassy though? Mm. I don't know that it's Christmassy. I know. Um, define Christmassy though. If you're very, if you're looking for something that's you know all the spices, Christmas and spices stuff, yeah. I mean, a lot of Christmas elves are just like a Christmas yeah. elf. I like it. I like it. Alright, so we've had beer number one, now we need mm. deer number one. Yeah, deer number you, one. What so are we trying first? I guess we'll we'll progress, so we'll we'll start out easy, we'll do liver sausage. So it's basically just uh, breakfast sausage with deer liver diced up and mixed in and then fried up. Spices or additives you did? Nope. Kept it nice and easy. Uh, I would say, you know, somebody that's really not into liver, this is probably the best gateway to ease into it. Ease into it, yes. So, give this a whirl. Smells good. Mmm, yummy. Tastes good. You mm. didn't. I like it. Did you grind this or did you dice it up very thin? Diced it. There's little chunks of liver still in there. Yes. But if you like liver, it's fine. You just gotta chew through it. Shouldn't be that many pieces that you gotta chew through. Mmm. That is so good. I really like that. If you like liver, you would love something like this. If you do not like liver, mm. you can maybe ease into something like this. As opposed to just eating liver plain. But it's definitely got that. Livery taste, but uh, it doesn't hide a little bit of livery taste because I mean, the ratio is probably one to four, one to five, the liver to the um, sausage. Good. Beer number two is get a can, get a can, yeah. whole can, any can. Oh, Ooh. it's Platform South Pole Elf. Is Platform the brewery? Yes. Okay. Platform Brewery. It, it looked like somebody else's. Uh, so I've the, never heard of Platform. No? Mm -mm. Uh, they make some good beers. Um, so it's described as just a winter ale, 8%, nutmeg, clove, and cinnamon. This is what I think of when I think Christmas beers, so. I hope it's not. I hope it's the good nutmeg cinnamon flavor. Oh, I love that color already. It's like brown. Like a reddish brown. Yeah, maybe more brown brown. It looked red at first coming out. That smells like mm. Christmas. That smells like fermented cherries and 
Well, it says nutmeg, clove, and cinnamon. So there you go. All your all your definitely funky flavors. smells strong. Whereas that last one didn't maybe seem like a seven two. This this is smell, an eight. So smells like an eight at least. See right. what it tastes like. Mm. Mm, that is yummy. I love that. Yeah, that's really good. I I put that up against Mad Elf. Really? Yeah. That's. Oh, and it got that really cold, like bitter aftertaste, sort of. Um, Little sticks on the tongue, but it's. I'm mm. I'm getting cherry. You said there's no cherry listed, but. You're getting cherry. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting some sort of fermented fruitiness. South Pole Elf. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's delicious. All right, so now we're on to deer number two, which will be? Deer number two, instead of, you know, liver and sausage, we're just going to go straight up liver. So, um, just liver cooked in a little bit of butter. Ooh. Not floured or anything. Uh, I think there was a little bit of onion powder in there to give no. it a little bit of onion. No sautéed onions? No, no sautéed onions. Uh, this way, that it, you know, you get the taste of just the... <laughs> Rich, the liver itself. Yeah, richness of the liver, um, the if richness you're, of the butter, yeah. that perfect cook. If you're into, um, I mean, if you like like calf liver or baby calf, calf liver, this is going to seem a little bit stronger flavored, but it's not off-putting. <laughs> it smells weirdly like venison and liver. Mm. Right. Already. Mm. Actually, I think a lot of what people, what turns people off on liver, is the texture. Because mm. the taste really isn't that bad. It's a little chalky. It's a little metallic-y. I think that's the thing that gets people. It's the metallic. Mm -hmm. um, they don't like that. But it's got a weird texture too. It almost, I mean, it's crunchy. Probably just because he, I grew up and he loved it, but I love liver. Butter, onions, liver, a couple eggs in the morning, good breakfast. Yeah, um, but yeah, this deer liver. For something that most people, you know, leave in their gut pile, um, it's, it's an awesome piece of meat. Yeah, try it next time. Yep. Welcome back, and guess who we found? Grumpy kid. <laughs> <laughs> so two beers, two deers. We are on beer number three. Beer number three. So Let's what's it gonna be? Go back to a bottle. Go back to a bottle. Pull a bottle. Elliot caught Bill. Ski bomb. Ski bomb. So, what type of beer is this? Uh, I wrote this down. The ski bomb. It's actually a heavily hopped winter L. Mm. Uh, it's, it's only a six percenter. It says mm -hmm. an all burn color, crisp and hoppy. That's the other like with winter beers. I do like the like the cherry and the spices, but I also like the hoppy just ales. You get the like pine almost if you get the right hops. It reminds me of winter. Yes. A lot of times they market those as spring beers more so. Like um, Sam Adams will do. Couple of varieties, but I like those for Christmas. It's a pretty general color. No, oh, 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 it smells hops. hoppy. <laughs> um, um. It smells like fresh hops. So like oh, that smooth. was it's such a nice break from just the Christmas L. True winter warmers. Oh, Ooh. yummy. Very hoppy, but it's not like that bile bitter hop yeah, that hangs around it. Gone. It's hop forward, and then it, it's sort of crisp. Yeah. It, yeah, it disappears really fast. Is it, is it a lager, or is it just it's an It's an IPA. Or, oh, an IPA. So it's a, it's, yeah. well, it, no, it says it's a winter ale, but it's okay. heavily hopped. Because <clears throat> you'll see IPLs, they call them, like uh, they're lagers, so they're Yeah, they're hop crisp lagers. And hoppy, yeah. Now this sort of reminds me of that, but it says it's an ale. Yeah, the color would suggest the lager. 
very drinkable. Although, I don't know if I could drink a lot of this, just because the, um, it is so hop forward, it's... I could. Yeah. Alright, so deer number three is something he provided to me and I cooked up. It's a tomato ginger venison rib that I found a recipe for, right. so... It's, um, some people will will take the ribs from their deer uh, if they butcher it themselves. Um, you have to be very careful because the fat on deer is like very waxy. Um, it sticks to your like the roof of your mouth, but it's you you just got to cook it long and slow. So yeah. I gave Jake a, a rack off of the one side, and um, I had a recipe, and I wanted to try it out. Days. So we'll give it a whirl. Mm. Not bad. Not a lot of fat to play with. Um, this has, you know, tomato, ginger, onion, garlic, <clears throat> soy sauce, a little sherry wine, Chinese five spice. Mm. I think I would maybe sub out brown sugar, I think. I'd take the brown sugar and five spice out maybe and do more like a paprika and a curry paste or something with the tomato and ginger. It's a little sweet for my taking, but I was just following a recipe for this one. But uh, it's a work. It's a different way to do ribs instead of just barbecuing them. So yeah. it's got a little Asian flavor to them, and it yeah. Know, and, and since you can't just you know throw these ribs on, um, you know the cooker like normal pork or mm -mm. beef ribs, um, this is a good way to do it. I'm enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we are on beer number four, and we're gonna have to do a can then, which will leave us a can in the bottle. Yes. Pick a can. Pick a can, any, any can, can. Oh, just everything on the, on the left hand side is <laughs> not done. So, New Belgium. We got a New Belgium accumulation. It's a white IPA. Ah, I dig that. Let me get this out here. So, let's, let's read this. Uh, it's a white IPA, 6.2%. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Description wise, not not too much uh, going on. Oh, Coors Night, and nice and light. I, I can't think can of any, that. but yeah, I do like the whole white IPA. It's something different. Although I like black IPAs too, just something to mix it up from the general. So yeah, look how light that is. That's an IPA. I mean, that looks like Miller Light in there. Mm. Ooh, it smells like Miller Light. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> smell very hot. It smells, it smells like a Pilsner. It smells sweet, yeah. Hmm. But right, beer number four. four. It's not very hoppy at all. Oh, I could drink the crap out of it. Oh, yeah, I could too. It's, it's almost creamy. Like, it's got a thick mouth feel, I feel like. It's foamy. Yeah, I... Close my eyes. I say this is a cream ale. I don't taste enough hops in here to warrant the IPA mm. label. You get a bitter aftertaste. There's definitely some odd views going on in there. You can definitely tell it's hopped. I don't know. It's definitely not a like winter warmer yeah. saison. Don't get me wrong. Ale. Don't get me wrong. This is delicious. It is oh um, just not what I was expecting. White IPA. Um, this is our fourth beer. And they all have been no done so really far. good. Wonder yeah, because you picked them out. Is that what you're gonna say? No. <laughs> Making our way to deer number four. This smells and looks so much better than you might think. So uh, tell the audience yeah. we're reading right so, now. So yeah. My biggest influence is uh, Steve Rinella from the Meat Eater Show. I tell you what, I, I love the show. It's not just about hunting. It's, it's his take on hunting. It's his take on eating, um, everything that he gets. He's the one that got me started eating hearts. Uh, he's the one that got me, uh, that tried the tongue. Um, yeah, it's I, I've got a lot of ideas from him. But so we're going to now try tongue. Uh, I My tried first it. Time. I, I tried it last year for the first time. Uh, I was told it tastes like roast beef, and sure enough, it did taste like roast beef. So, 
Yeah, we should have shown the camera before we oh, chopped before it up. We, we diced it uh, up. It looked like a tongue, but uh, to be honest, like. It, it was just slow simmered. Right and now, it just looks like roast beef. Yeah, it was slow simmered. Um, and it smells like roast beef. For about three hours uh, in some water that had, I, I added some spices to. Um, then once it cools, you take off the outer skin and you're ready to go. So everybody look at Jake for his reaction. This is the first time that he's ever had tongue, so... I, if you wouldn't have told... Well, if you wouldn't have shown me it before you cut it up and told me, probably would never know, so let's try it. Hmm. That tastes like I'm having roast beef at somebody's graduation party. Exactly. It's another piece of meat that nobody, nobody... Or hardly anybody ever takes. Like this outside layer, I feel like it's a little like maybe thicker to get through, but this is much. I mean, you could serve this to a bunch of people, shred this up after you cooked it, and they nobody would, know. would know this is tongue. This is a deer tongue. They would have thought this was shredded roast beef. Yeah, so, so trying this deer tongue, which isn't very big at all. Sort of makes me want to try like beef tongue just because uh, or the pork tongue just because the tongue is so much bigger More uses obviously we were talking the outside layer with the taste buds You cut and peel that off obviously if that was on this would be gross. This is the inside. It's just a big muscle Yeah, if you think uh, about it, like it's just a, it's a big lean muscle. There's and hardly any fat of roast beef I had some horseradish sauce. So there you go so you gotta you gotta try you know here, here's a piece more down towards the end. The texture's just a little bit more firm, but taste wise, it's um, if you would if you would taste this, you would if you were a hunter, you'd be like, oh my god, gotta get that. Something everybody just throws away. First time I've ever tried this, mind blown. That was delicious. Would never peg that for tongue or some organ that you wouldn't think to eat. No, no eating your first tongue. Yeah, so <laughs> tongue, it was on my tongue and it was there. <laughs> We've had it's four yeah. beers and four deers and I haven't had one single thing I didn't like yet. This is the best video ever. Yay, 2020. Yeah, <laughs> in this shitty year. <laughs> on to the fifth beer after this. Beer number five. Jake is picking 12 dogs of Christmas ale. It's, uh, it's a thirsty dog. Thirsty dog right here. Oh, I've had this one before. Have you? Yeah, I think yeah, you have. yeah last year or the year before. Um, I remember it being pretty decent. Yeah. So let's give this a pour. Thirsty dog is supposed to be um, a winter warmer, 8.3%. Toasted and caramel malt, honey, cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. So this one should be really spicy. Um, what I would consider a Christmas ale. Yeah, I believe, I think I was at Zach's once and he had a bunch of this. What? No? Yep, this is more of your spicy Oh, this is cinnamon yeah, and nutmeg. This is, this is what I definitely think of when I think of a Christmas ale. Yep. All right, let's give it a whirl. Yeah, I, I can deal with that. It, it tastes good. It's it's not up my alley. It's not what I prefer, but I, I can drink this. I, I I appreciate it. It's a it's a Christmas oh. ale, and it's it's a very good beer made mm -hmm. as a Christmas ale. Just not one of my favorites. Yeah, any given night you give me a choice between this and that new Belgian we just had. I'm taking the new Belgian. But if I had this at a Christmas party, I would not be upset. No. This is, it's got Christmas written all over it. It's spicy. Yes, it um, I don't know, if, I almost mentally tastes like cranberry or something just because I'm looking at the label and smelling it. Mm. But yeah, Thirsty Dog, good job. Yeah, um... 8.3 though? Is that what that says? Is that what you said? 8.3. 8.3 though, so tread lightly. Does not taste like an 8.3. It does not taste like an 8.3. Get in trouble with this one. Just like a Mad Elf. I mean, yeah. 
Well, Matt Alpha, I feel like you know you're drinking <laughs> the 10% or whatever. This, no, this is, I mean, it's spicy, but it's still smooth enough that you would down a few of these and get in over your head if you're not uh, familiar with craft beer. So, good, good, good. Good, good, good. The fifth and final version of White Tail Deer for the day is being unveiled as I speak. Oh my, that is not what I expected it to look like. That's huge. Well, it's, it was this round, so you sort of cut it. Butterflied it. Yeah, sort of you butterflied yes. it just to get um, all that. Um. So, this is a New York strip. <laughs> what do you think this is before we say it? Um, yeah, so... It's smoked. Yeah. Whitetail deer heart, smoked, and grilled. Um, just salt and pepper. No flavor. I, I wanted to keep it all just, you know, the taste... It is what it is. Um, so we're gonna cut up. I know out of my like two or three subscribers that Sean is one of them. So mm. Sean, we ate heart before. We sort of did like deviled. You did like, pickled. No, it was deviled. It was like almost poached with Dijon mustard and. Oh, soy you did sauce. a pickled one with like, with the pickling spice. Mm. Put it in a jar. No? <laughs> I did not put a heart in a jar, no. Oh. And it was called Deviled Heart. It was it had some Dijon mustard type of deal. And it was very tender and delicious. This, I mean, this just looks like a steak. Smells like smoked something. Mm. Still a little pink in the middle. Yeah, it's got a little resistance, almost like the liver when you're cutting through it. But uh, thanks for waiting for me. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's good. How do you describe that texture? I mean, it's it's very firm. It's not fibrous like like beef. No, it's not as chewy as beef. It's almost more like liver in that way, but it's definitely not as. It's not like a roast beef where you, you get yeah. those like long fibers. It's not it's, as off-putting his liver. I mean, it, it kind of, it maybe almost like eating fish, like seafood, like the texture-wise, like mm. scallop. Would that be a? It's like a cross between scallops and beef. Yeah, texture-wise, but I mean, it tastes like. Mm. I mean, you smoked it, it this. It tastes like the smoke that I smoked yeah. in. Right? Yeah, you, I, you, you smoked, smoked it with this, some so chips. Somebody like pork vibes from it, but like, so think of eating a nice scallop that tastes like smoked pork chops. Mm, yeah. And it's just the deer heart that I'm eating right now. And uh, this is another one, you know, mm. Steve Ranella from the Meat Eater Show would talk about. And, you know, he would eat the heart. Um, he would talk about, you know, back in his younger days, his dad would take them hunting. And if they came across a gut pile, his dad would pull the heart out of the gut pile. Because nobody saves the heart. I mean, he, he really ate should. it all the time. This will be the second time I've tried heart. Two very different ways, and both were freaking delicious. So... I mean, if you're going through the hop, the trouble of hunting, and you're going to gut and quarter and whatever a deer anyway, just keep the heart, keep the liver. I mean, tongue might be a little extreme. I can understand if you want to leave that there. But you still have to try it at least once. Yeah, but... And... And we're back. So, five good beers, five good deers. We're going to cap off the night with our sixth and final beer. It is a... 21st Amendment Fireside Chat. I love all their political themed beers. Although this is a 7-9 English Strong Ale. Okay. So, um, I don't think they make this anymore because when I was looking up the description they were just saying that uh, this beer is not made anymore. So, um, it's kind of cool. It has, a, has an old guy smoking. It's FDR. Is that FDR? Fireside Chats. 
so, named after yeah. so the first president he's, he's, to he's broadcast sort of like, his speeches onto radios. Yeah, so he's sort of like, you know, sitting beside the fire, so we'll give this a whirl. All right. Nothing like naming an English strong out oh. after a, one of the most famous American presidents. Ooh. Ooh why that is that so dark? Because it's an English strong ale. So maybe this is a good thing that we left this one to last. So I have a feeling I'm not going to like this one. Yeah, it's not the strongest alcohol-wise beer we've tried today, but it might be the strongest. Seven, nine, it's wise. up there. Yeah. Um, not getting a lot of smell. It smells like a... Mm. It smells like a brown ale to me. A little nutty. <laughs> caramel. Stay out of the garbage, buddy. Yeah. English strong ales, um, yeah. You know, my palate's just not cheers. keen on those, but cheers. Cheers, old chap. 2020, the last of the Christmas beers. I feel like you would love that. It's not bad. That's a nice, flavorful... Mm. That's like a brown ale. Yeah, I would not call that a English strong ale. That's like a strong brown ale. Should you compare this to mischievous or? No? Oh Quite. no 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 no. no. Okay, oh, sorry. Mischievous is yeah. <laughs> sorry, uh, I brought it up. It, it's brown and nutty and sort of like it's down here. This one's up here on the alcohol level. But it's brown and nutty, don't you think? No. Um, I get a little sweet. Maybe a little nutty. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah, I used to, back in my college days, and I discovered craft beer, Newcastle was my go-to. Go oh my gosh, I was just drink. I'd be at the bar just drinking Newcastle. Everybody has, like, Bud Light pitchers, and I'm like, can I even wear that Newcastle? Right. Uh, I think and Newcastle... I, really, I like that brown flavor, and that's what this is throwing yeah. me back to. And then they did the one that was the werewolf. Remember, it was Newcastle, like... Special edition. It was I do not remember that. One. <laughs> yeah, I, I did bad. break into the Browns with a with a Newcastle, and when I tasted a Newcastle, I thought, "Oh my God, this is yeah, this is the way that I wanted beer to taste for me." Um, so I'm a Brown fan yeah, through and through. Anybody watching this from Cal U, slight chances that may be. I think I was the only kid at J. Cole's drinking Newcastle, <laughs> playing the trivia machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, boy so uh, this was a good successful day um, we'll see how short I can get this video down but we had six pretty delicious beers we had five pretty delicious types of uh, different different Deer venison parts. that you might not eat all the time uh, what was your favorite beer your least favorite beer Ooh. your favorite deer and your least favorite deer Oh man! Um, wow! Um, there really weren't any I'm bad sort ones. Of, I'm sort of torn. Than usual. Yeah, be between the New Belgium, the White IPA, and um, but platforms that South Pole Elf, that Winter Elf was really good. Yeah, um, my favorite beer, although they were all fairly good. Um, the platform South Pole Elf was definitely my favorite. It reminded me of Christmas. It reminded me of a Mad Elf type beer. Uh, my least favorite beer. Not that it was that bad, but I think the first one we had, that farmhouse ale. It, I just sometimes that on. yeah, that weedy flavor with the wild yeast. I just I don't always love it. It reminds me of barley wine and. <clears throat> I mean, not that it was bad, that was probably my least favorite beer of the day, with the platform being my favorite. What was your least favorite beer? That one as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, how about going to... The uh, deer? Deer. Ooh. Um, least favorite? Oh, my gosh. Again, not that it was bad, I think my... I would say the ribs. My least favorite... It might might be the ribs, but I'm gonna say the liver sausage, only because the liver is very. I thought it was very chunky in there. 
I that was my fault. I didn't think it was cohesive. But, I mean, with liver, you can't grind it through a meat grinder. It turns tried that mush. once. Yeah, yeah, tried that once, and so it just So, you have to it. hand chop it, and you just got to get a real fine... I mean, I like the taste of liver, but I was getting sausage liver. Sausage liver. I wasn't necessarily getting it together. Um, but the ribs are down there, too. I think I could tweak that recipe and really make it good. That was too sweet for me. Uh, my favorite, though... That's a tough one, too. I'm going to have to take the heart over the tongue, barely. The heart, yeah, but the tongue was probably the biggest surprise The tongue was you. the biggest surprise, yeah. I would definitely uh, how was good thinking, that taste? oh, this is going to be, like, chewy, gooey, slimy, you know, <laughs> swallow it whole because you can't chew it up. And, no, it was, like, literally roast beef. Uh, that was a very pleasant surprise, but... Uh, heart. Uh, oh, I thought maybe the first smoked, time it was a fluke. Yeah, smoked part way and then grilled the rest. Yeah, it's not a fluke. I've had it twice now and it's been amazing. And there time, really so. was no seasoning, um, some salt and pepper, and that was it. So um, heart is the real deal. That's definitely my favorite. Yeah. So, we hope you and yours have a wonderful Christmas. Hopefully, you yeah. got a 2020. Year. Hopefully, 2020 ends a lot better than it started. And went through the whole year because it's just been a weird, weird year. Hopefully I get this video edited and posted and you still have time to get yourself a deer. And <laughs> harvest you some of these organs that you might not have thought of. Or if you, you know somebody, somebody, yeah, if you know somebody that gets a deer, um, just ask them like, hey, you know, save me the heart, save me the tongue. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a lot of work. But it, it's just a very nice choice piece of meat that you, that will surprise you that you would even like it. And if you happen to see these beers in your local store, I mean, we didn't really have a bad one all day. So no. can't go wrong with any of the six we tried. Nope. Until the next holiday. Mm. Cheers. Cheers.